so hello friends now in this particular video we are starting with the discussion of pathology okay and the first portion which we are going to discuss is systemic pathology and in that particular portion we will first focus on gi okay then we will move to next other parts okay so let's start with the pathology of gi right okay so for mainly we have to discuss about the cancers of the gi okay so let's start of the cancer so first we will give a brief introduction about all so coming to the first esophagus so we have to study squamous carcinoma and adenocarcinoma of esophagus okay clear and if we talk about neuroendocrine tumor then carcinoid and in stromal leiomyoma so we have to study three carcinoma of the particular organ neo neuroendocrine tumor of the particular organ and a stromal tumor of the particular organ clear then coming to the stomach then adenocarcinoma which is of two type diffusion intestinal then again carcinoid and here gist that is gastrointestinal stromal tumor this is important okay now in a small intestine we have to study about adenocarcinoma then carcinoid and gist in large intestine adenocarcinoma carcinoid and here we have not to study any stromal tumor then markers so here cytokratin will be the marker for carcinoma for neuroendocrine synaptophysin chromogranin cd56 cd57 and nse so these two are most important synaptophysin and chromogranin and when we talk about stromal tumor then vimentin and desmin these two are the markers for the stromal tumor yeah. so this is the basic intro about all the cancers of the gi tract clear so let's move to the next part coming to the first organ that is your esophagus okay so first we will focus on esophagus so esophageal carcinoma okay so let's mm, discuss about the esophageal carcinoma first then we will move to the other parts okay so first coming to the squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma so squamous cell carcinoma basically involve middle and upper one third of the esophagus okay whereas adenocarcinoma involve lower one third means distal so you can remember a d d for distal so it involve distal portion of the esophagus okay now what are the risk factor for squamous cell carcinoma tobacco and alcohol along with hpv infection here the risk factor is reflux disease that is barrett esophagus clear now where squamous cell carcinoma in situ will occur that will we progress to invasive carcinoma okay and two important microscopic findings are there that is squamous cell will be seen in groups and keratin pulse will be seen so anywhere if squamous cell carcinoma is occurring then there will be keratin pulse you will get keratin pulse on microscopy so remember this keratin pulse you will get keratin pulse on microscopy here intestinal metaplasia first occur then it will progress to dysplasia then carcinoma in situ and then it will progress to adenocarcinoma okay here you will get invasive glands atypical appearance cells multiple lumen and multiple layers so these are the microscopic findings of the adenocarcinoma clear now moving to the gastric carcinoma okay moving to gastric carcinoma so gastric carcinoma is basically divided on the basis of three things okay three properties first on the basis of depth of invasion early gastric carcinoma advanced gastric carcinoma on the basis of histology intestinal gastric carcinoma diffuse gastric carcinoma and another one is on the basis of molecular subtyping okay so coming to depth of invasion so you are saying the tumor cells have invaded till submucosa okay so that will be coming under early gastric carcinoma and if it has invaded serosa serosal fat muscularis like this so it will be coming under advanced gastric carcinoma clear if glands like a structure is seen means intestinal metaplasia is seen then it will be of intestinal type carcinoma if just this if diffuse type of cells are seen tumor cells okay diffuse tumor cells are seen like this this will be diffuse gastric carcinoma okay clear and in case of diffuse gastric carcinoma you will get signet ring cell this is important signet signet ring cell appearance this is very important signet ring cell appearance what is this so the cell will fill with mucus okay the cell will fill with mucus and pushes the nucleus to one corner okay like this so nucleus push to periphery and mucin is present in this clear okay 
No mucosal mass is there. Loss of renal folds will be there. Okay, invasion of the wall leading to dysplasia. Wall thickness will be there. And this wall thickness is also known as leather bottle appearance or lentis plastica. Okay, this is usually asked in your theory examination. Okay, of two marks or three marks. That is what is lentis plastica. So loss of renal folds and the thickening of the wall is known as lentis plastica. Now coming to the molecular subtyping of gastric cancer so first is your chromosomally unstable okay and the gene which are involved is p53 p53 mutation is high okay and histology will be intestinal type if p53 gene is mutated histology will be mostly intestinal type then genomically stable tumors okay here cdh1 and rhoa mutation is seen clear and it is of diffuse type then microcephalite unstable tumors mlh1 silencing will be seen and here intestinal mode in compared to diffuse then comes your epstein barr virus positive tumors okay pic 3 k mutation is seen pdl12 overexpression is seen here okay and it is also mostly of intestinal type okay it may be diffuse but mostly of intestinal type clear so these are the molecular subtyping chromosomally stable genomically stable microcephalite unstable tumor and epstein barr virus positive tumors so to just note down the name because it is important for your mcq examination now coming to the next one that is gist gastrointestinal stromal tumors so first coming to origin of the tumor so it arises from interstitial cells of kazab which are basically pacemaker cells okay genes which are mutated here cqit pdgfra okay these are the two most important genes which are mutated here clear gist with no cqit or pdgfra mutation are also seen which is known as wild type gist okay in which there is no mutation in cqit or pd gfr gene there is no mutation in cq or pd gfr gene when we talk about the wild type gist clear okay but minority of wild type gist have mutation in succinate dehydrogenase enzyme so this is important other mc question so basic at origin of the gist is your interstitial cells of kazal genes which are mutated here cq and pd gfr and there are gist which have no cq means there are and there is no mutation in cqit or pdgfra that will be known as wild type okay but it has a mutation in succinate dehydrogenase enzyme now on gross you will see solitary well circumcised masses okay intact mucosa will be intact okay there may be ulceration present but uh, mostly intact mucosa will be seen which is projecting out of that okay and when you cut the tumor then the cut surface is gray white okay with cold appearance this is important gray white with cold appearance will be seen clear and there may be areas of hemorrhage and necrosis as well so these are the four to five gross finding of the gist okay solitary well circumcised mass intact mucosa okay cut surface is gray white and areas of hemorrhage and necrosis will be seen in microscopy you will get three type of histology either spindle cell histology cells will be spindle cell like this is the most common pattern basically okay epithelioid histology when cells will be looking like epithelium and mixed histology means both spindle and epithelioid now when you will do ihc okay even no histochemistry then it will be cd117 positive because this is the cd marker for mutated c kit gene product okay dog1 plus positive which is discovered on just one vimentin positive and c34 positive so there are the special mcq question which is which may be asked in your mcq examination and like this cd117 positive dog 1 plus positive vimentin positive and c34 positive now coming to the prognosis part so it will depend on three that is tumor size tumor location and number of mitosis per 50 hour high field okay if tumor size is less than 5 cm then it will be a better prognosis if tumor location is gastric then better prognosis number of mitosis per 50 hour field if low then better prognosis so this is this much you have to write if a question coming on gist okay as a short notes or anything gist so you have to write this much okay now so this is about your cancers of esophagus okay and gastric in next video we will discuss about polyps of the intestine so thank you for watching and if you not subscribe my channel please subscribe us and support us i will continue posting this types of videos okay so thank you for watching